Uh, okay, uh, so apparently we have a new um, a new unit. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, I didn't see. Obviously, I don't watch live streams and stuff. I don't know what's coming as it comes. So I just kind of watch, <laughs> see what comes out. As you can see down here in the uh, uh, Mango released the video on the toe. I was like, okay, well, let's go look at the character. Um, so yeah, let's kind of see what's going on here. Uh, yeah, let's just skip all this stuff. She a mage? She's a knight. Okay, so uh, already she looks kind of interesting to me. So I haven't seen anything other than a green knight with her art design, and I'm already going to tell you right now that um, I'm probably going to pull for her just because she looks pretty cool. But we'll see what she does. Um, hopefully that's not... Yeah, that looks really bad. Um, hold on, let me see if I can fix this. Pay no attention to the dude behind the... Uh, Yeah, that's better. Um, okay. Anyway. Uh, yeah, so it's pretty interesting. So attack is pretty low. Health is um, middlingly high. Um, the defense is pretty high. It's almost 700. So she might be a defense scaling unit. I'm not, you know, who knows? Uh, we'll see. That's cool and all, but uh, no, I don't really care what you have to say. Um... Malicious Smile, this is the S2, and this is a... When attacked by a single attack, reflects 30% damage suffered to the attacker. Um, so, for those of you... Uh, yeah, so I guess... Part of this is to counter... Um, Hua Young, maybe... Uh, I mean, there's a lot of other single target units. Like, Hua Young is just, you know, a big... A decent threat right now. Um, but... People like Lilius are still single target, right? She she single targets and she brings someone else, and usually that other person she brings is also single target. Not always, but usually. Um, obviously, Ravi's single target. Uh, what's his name? What's her name? What's his name? What's her name? Ramiro is single target. Um, so yeah, that's that's kind of interesting. Um, you can, I feel like you just kind of avoid her, but we'll see what she does here. Reflective like damage cannot be higher than the caster's max health. The caster's max health. Okay. After being attacked, when health is 30% or less, it spells all debuffs from the caster and activates murderous intent. The effect can only be activated once every five turns. Okay. Grants a barrier to the caster for three turns and increases combat readiness by 20. That's kind of interesting. Um, so you just clear all debuffs, get a shield, and you go, you push up 20%, which I guess is 25% given the skill ups. Um, this second part is kind of interesting. Uh, obviously, I think if you just left her with this first part, it wouldn't be enough, so you want more stuff. Uh, how useful this stuff down here is, I'm not entirely sure. Um, it's certainly going to be annoying, don't get me wrong. She's, it's, not, it's, not, it's not a bad thing, it's doing something. And getting like a huge barrier um, and then 20% CR push is pretty annoying, especially when you can't just single her. You can't just like focus her down, right? You have to, you have to hit her with AoEs or something, right? You can't just focus her down. Uh, but it's good to see this mechanic of reflecting damage being used more, right? Because there's just... Let's see, I think Dominiel has it. Does she? I'm not entirely sure. Again, like, it's not... It's, not, it's so underused that you don't, I don't really know anymore. So, I, like I said, maybe Dominiel has it. Um, Terranor, one of the Terranor guards or something like that. Terranor with a shield. Uh, he has it. Um, but other than that, that's basically it. So it's good to see this uh, mechanic get used a little more. Uh, let's see what else. Did we get to see the animation? Okay, so they're just going to show us with this. I guess you're just supposed to bait her in in Arena. Uh, That's kind of interesting. Like I said, I mean, this, uh, it is, I don't know, it doesn't really seem to do a whole lot. Maybe it has something to do with the with the um, S3 or something like that. It might have conjunction with the S3 and the S1, who knows. But yeah, other than that, I mean, just the damage reflection is pretty decent. Uh, as you can see, that Hua Young basically didn't take very much damage anyway. Um, obviously, the shield's covering up how much damage she took, but, like, it's still not that much. Um, so you're not going to, like, I don't know. She'll die before Hua Young dies is what I'm assuming is going to be. 
um, the situation most of the time. So I don't know how useful it is so far, but we'll we'll find out. I mean, if you look at her health, oh, she has a she has attack buff, so that's pretty good. Let's look at Hua Young's HP. So presuming that Hua Young was at full HP, she lost the entire shield she had on, plus uh, that little chunk of health, which isn't too bad. Um, yeah, Hua Young has 9k here. So, yeah. That's not too bad. Um, okay, so let's see what this S3 does. Attacks the enemy by unraveling a sphere of sadism. Uh, when the enemy is defeated, recovers caster's max health. It recovers caster's health. Is that max health? Like, does it go all the way? Or who knows? When the target is not in a leader boss monster, damage sharing effects are ignored. So, no, no damage sharing. Which is interesting. Um, there aren't a whole lot of units that are using that these days. It's mainly just uh, Aureus. But, you know, take that as you will. Uh, penetrates the target's defense, but cannot trigger a critical hit. Okay, so we've got more non-critting. Which is pretty good against Hua Young specifically as well. Because, um, you know, obviously... Wait. Yeah, uh, pretty good against Hua Young, just because Hua Young has like 30% built-in damage reduction on crits. Um, and just in general, like there's a lot of units where it's like crit isn't too useful against them. In today's meta, anyway. Um, damage dealt increases proportional to the caster's lost health, and the amount recovered increases proportional to the caster's max health. Um, so, as you guys can see down here, Green Crow is probably a pretty decent... Um, summary of what she is um but she's more aggressive than he is like her s3 makes it so that she dumps a lot of damage like back into the person that hits her and then you or her s2 does that and then her s3 obviously just like when she's like reduced by a bunch she just slams somebody with this um i'm not sure how useful it's going to be against Hua young specifically again this is only useful when you're playing like uh regular arena rta I'm not saying she's useless in RTA, but you have to realize that in RTA, like, if she's really good against Hua Young, they're just going to ignore her until later, right? So you have to find some way to make her useful. Um, so as, as far as we know, we'll have to see what the S1 does and whether we can run Albrus on her. Because if you run Albrus on her, she's going to be pretty irritating, and I think uh, I think she won't be too bad. Um, but yeah, she's got built-in healing and uh, defense penetration, which is pretty interesting. Um, yeah. She's a lot more selfish than Crow, because Crow obviously gives out defense buff, and you can run Crow on an Aureus or something like that. Uh, so this is yeah, this is a single target. I was it just uh, I was looking at it just to see what exactly it did. I like the animation for this. She looks kind of like the character from the Spider Guy from uh, yeah, Twenty Souls Consumed. She looks like the Spider Guy from Kimetsu no Yaiba that one season. Kind of reminds me of that, but like a female version. Tax enemy with a 85 to 100% chance to redirect, provoke for one turn. Damage dealt, increased proportional to the caster's max health. Um, I, I'm not sure what this is. Does redirected provoke... Let's, let's look this up real quick. Redirected provoke. Okay, so this is what I was wondering. Target standing with the highest max health with a basic skill at the start of the turn. So, there's only three units that have it, and Yula is one of them. Yulha. See, she sounds like Yula, and that's a character in Genshin. Um, this is pretty interesting. Um, I'm not sure why it isn't just a taunt. Why isn't it just regular provoke? Because clearly you want people to attack into her, so she gets, for one, she gets the damage reflect. And for two, she gets her HP lower, so she can S3 them. Um, yeah, I'm not sure what's up with that. Uh, it is kind of interesting. Additionally, so, her kit looks pretty good. Um, she's gonna be about as good as Krau is, I think. Probably better than Krau. She's, she's only, she's only going to be better than Krau because she'll theoretically be faster than Krau in terms of, like, not just, like, base speed. Probably the base speed's not even, the base speed's irrelevant. What I say faster is what I just mean in terms of gameplay. Um, because of the 20% CR push she has in the S3, the shield, and like the way her mechanics work, uh, you want to get her S3 off as soon as possible, and then just kind of have her sit there. Um, the S1, and then, you know, heal off the S3 and all that stuff. So, so she, to me, she just seems like a more, like, faster Krow, because Krow kind of has to sit there, because uh, people ignore Krow mainly, and they just hit everyone else, right? 
Um, like I said, I'm interested why they gave her a redirect to provoke and not just regular provoke, because most of the time it should be her with the highest HP, but uh, yeah, I don't know. Take that as you will. And I'm going to guarantee you, like, this showcase was kind of weird, but like, unless you're running her with, like, I don't know, 26k HP, uh, anything under 26, like at 24k HP, Yolha is going to die to a single target. Unless, I have to go back and check this. Yeah, so she reflects 30, wait a minute. Does this 30% reflect it back? Like, if she takes 10k, does this reduce it by 30? So you take 7k and they take 3k? Or what does that mean exactly? So that's what I'm kind of wondering about. Because not only that, but this, like, despite having attack buff, she actually hit pretty pretty softly. Let's go look at how much damage she does. Oh, she had a shield, so there you go. I think, right? She has a shield. That's a small shield. It's not that big. So she hits for... 17, the shield, I want to say what? Maybe 2? 19? My, I've seen, I've seen... Hua Young's hit for like 24k, right? So unless you've got 24k on your, like probably more than 24k on her, she's not gonna, yeah. So 24k. So she probably would have been one shot if that Hua Young was built better. Um, but I, like I said, I can't really, I don't really know what's going on here. Um, they do also have uh, him. What's his name? Raz, right there. So Raz might have Aureus. I guess we we would have seen that earlier. Let's see if we can. Alright, so does Raz take damage off of this? Okay, he does not. So yeah, I don't know. It's kinda it's kinda weird because like I said, I've seen I've seen Hua Young's hit for like twenty four K. Um, so maybe I should probably listen to what he's saying, he'll tell me if like that reflected damage, does she suffer it only or does she send it back or how does that work? But yeah, like aside from that, like she's just gonna I feel like she's just gonna get stomped on by um Hua Young regardless, but we'll we have yet to see. Uh, but yeah, the, the, I mean, I guess you can just assume the first turn, or you can assume the turn, the the S one is just a taunt. Now, from what I'm looking at here, you're probably just gonna want to run her on, um, Elbrus. If not Elbrus, maybe just Aureus, right? So one or the other, just to get her HP lower. Um, depending on the multipliers on this S one, it could be useful, but I kind of doubt it. Uh, nobody runs Aureus on on Crow to get his HP lower, right? So let's kind of take a look at her. I, and also, I haven't seen. Obviously, I haven't seen it, but like, I feel like I have a feeling that her artifact is going to be underwhelming. It's going to be something like one of these new artifacts that are like, here is like fifteen percent HP or something, twenty percent HP, and then some like jobber effect. You know what I mean? Like a lot of these bad artifacts that have been coming out lately. Like nothing. Like nothing's coming. The, the, my, my, the point I'm trying to make is that like nothing's coming out that's as strong as like. Aureus, or not Aureus, uh, well, I mean Aureus too, but like, nothing's coming out that's as strong as like Elbrus, right? Like, as, as powerful as Elbrus is to the meta, like, nothing that strong is coming out in terms of artifacts for some reason. They're all coming out like super nerfed. Um, so artifact, let's take a look at this. Outside of combat, grants barrier to the cast for two turns. That might be what she has on and why she started off with a barrier, because I couldn't see any other reason for her to have a barrier. When attacking with a single attack, if the caster is granted a barrier, damage dealt increases by 20%. Um, this is kind of interesting. Uh, basically, it, it's one of the only damage multipliers we have for crowd for the S three that she has. Um, so she can hit. Yeah, so if she hits the S three, you're getting twenty percent more damage on that, which isn't necessarily bad. Um, but I'm going to tell you right now, on an ability like this, twenty percent isn't really a whole lot. Um, because it's not twenty percent; it's like sixteen percent. But I've run. ML Crow with the uh, not the portrait of the saviors, the other one, the uh, symbol of unity, and the damage difference isn't really that big. It's not like I don't know. It's it's not enough to be like, oh yeah, I'm running this on him. I had it on him just because I for one didn't have a whole lot of other artifacts to use, and I figured I'd just get a bit of extra damage and the the ability to like uh, hit people who were dodging at the time. Of course, now our dodging people's dodging is like way higher than it was back then. Um, but the point being that this twenty percent extra damage, I'm not sure if it's like super valuable over something like um, maybe an Aureus or something like that. Um, because like I think the Aureus for one gives your team more survivability while also um, while also giving you more damage on 
the S3. Because if she has, like, uh, again, we go back to the number. If she has 24,000 HP, she gets hit. It doesn't bring her down. It brings her down to, like, uh, I don't know, 12,000 HP. So now her S3 hits for 12,000. You can run this, and you're getting 10% more damage. So you're getting 12,000 plus 48, so 16, almost 17,000 damage, right? Or you can run the Aureus, have all the benefits of running an Aureus, which means 10% defense to everybody, damage sharing, and she takes basically way more damage. So instead of that, she takes... That, that, that calculation that I did earlier might be wrong. If it's 12, 10% 10 of 12,000 is 1,200. Yeah, 24 is 12, 24 plus 4, 48. 4,800 plus 12,000 is 16, yeah. 4,800, yeah, that should be right. Anyway, but if you get Aureus, you'll probably get that extra. She'll take, instead of taking that 12,000 with the Aureus, she'll probably take that 17,000 damage now because she's damage sharing. It'll charge the Aureus better, give everyone more survivability, and so on and so forth. Like, basically at this point, I'm explaining what Aureus does. Um, the only thing that this is going to helpful is help for is going to be to survive uh, Hua Young, right? Because the barriers are what made her survive there, um, you know, theoretically. Uh, but yeah, so you can run like a 24k HP, you know, Yelan, put this on her, and she'll survive a Huayang, right? Like, if you're under that that, that threshold. Um, so yeah, that's, you know, you're basically just making her HP bar bigger without making it bigger. Uh, is it bad? Eh, I don't know. Um, it just seems kind of like only for her because no other unit, at least no other, what other, like, um, what other knight is going to use this artifact over whatever they're using already? Because, like I said, Aureus is one of the bigger ones, which is, like, the main thing. Um, you've got things like Adamant every so often. Uh, Albrus is... The people Albrus Ritual Sword is good on are already too good. Um, yeah, I'm not entirely sure what she would do with this. But, yeah, her, her kit's kind of interesting. Like I said, I'm, I'm going to pull for her anyway, just because I think she's a lot of fun. Um, but she's not going to be as useful as you might think she is, because that idea of taking all the damage from... A Hua Young's S3 is never going to happen because in this situation, if my Hua Young is ready to go, I'm probably taking out, um, what's his name? I'm probably taking out Raz first, right? Because if I bring Raz low, if I don't kill Raz and I bring Raz low, he's not going to come back and like nuke one of my units. Um, and after that, we could just focus on like killing, you know, that other one, the, uh, what's his name? Taeyu here. So the point being that, um, She's good if we get a lot of people, like, focusing on her, but no one's going to want to focus on her. Especially, like, for one, they're not going to focus on her because you're not running Elbrus on her because Elbrus doesn't do very much. And second of all, you can run her on Aureus, but I, I don't know. I mean, like, she basically at that point she's doing what Crow's doing, and Crow's going to be way better against Yelan than, or Hua Young than Yulha is, right? Um, so, like I said, it's just, it's one of those things where she's another option. Uh, she can survive a Hua Young, but no one's going to attack her. Right, so if you're if you if you're gonna pull her for just arena, that's kind of a dumb a dumb move because arena is basically not it's not that hard. You just have to pick your team properly when you go into arena. Um, you don't need to pull for arena. You need to pull for RTA, and RTA. I don't think Yulha has much of a like much of a good purpose in there, honestly. Um, but yeah, like I said, I think she's cool. Um, having like a green crow isn't too bad. Um, this damage reflect is all right, but like I said, it, it requires people to attack into her, and no one's gonna want to attack into her because she has this damage reflect. They're just gonna save her till the end, and then you know eradicate everyone else. Um, so because they're gonna avoid attacking her, probably I'd run her on something like a uh, what's it called? Something like an Aureus, just to give everyone else survivability, and then whenever she gets a chance, she'll have stacked up enough that she just hits somebody, and that's it, right? And then the S three does what the S three does. Um, yeah, it heals her, which is like, who cares? It, not only that, it's also just, again, it, like, it's very similar to Crow because now, like, Crow hits, and instead of healing himself, he gives himself half his HP as a barrier, which is basically healing, right? His health bar got bigger, or got filled out. It's just barrier instead of actual health. Um, so she's, like I said, she's just kind of a side grade. She's not really doing very much. Um, yeah, not only that, hold on. Yeah, not only that, she actually has to kill somebody with this, whereas Crow gets that shield no matter what, right? So I don't know. It's, like I said, it's... It is what it is. Um, sharing the fix are ignored. Yeah. 
So, am I going to pull for her? Yes. Um, do you need her? Probably not. But at this point, like, there's really nothing to summon for. So we're all just kind of pulling for whatever comes out because we can. Um, so if you like her design and all that stuff, go ahead. Like I said, she's, she doesn't seem critical. If you have Crow, she's about as useful as Crow is going to be. Um, yeah, if you have Crow, she's going to be as useful as Crow is going to be. Um, though, like I said, I think she's going to be a little faster than Crow in terms of like combat tempo. Whereas Crow just kind of like, Crow, literally Crow can't do anything but sit there and be annoying. Where she can do a little more. She can be a little, a little more proactive. Um, she's still going to be kind of slow, right? Is that's the main problem? Um, but I don't know. Like I said, if someone figures out, you know, if you're running her with like, um, I don't know, Fairy Tail Tenebrio or something, or just some somebody who can like AOE provoke people and then just throw the, everyone's attention onto her, then maybe you could probably do something like that where you're just constantly hitting people, like having people run into her and do damage to themselves. Um, but I don't know. I, I'm not sure I would uh, like. Who does this better? Like Senya does this better, right? Where she like if she gets if Senya gets hit, you don't crit on her. Uh, she's just gonna hit you back. For one, she has counter in her S three, so she's gonna hit you back. Um, and if you're running that artifact that she has, you, she's gonna do true damage as well as her passive, which does damage to the enemy based on you know her attack stat if they don't crit, which she has built in crit resistance. So, is 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 uh is Senya basically better than her? Not necessarily. Uh, but she's doing a lot of the same things that Yulha wants to do, other than just that Yulha has like that S3, that Crow S3, right? Um, but yeah, so I'll keep that in mind. Not only that, like, Senya, if you single target her, you're going to get hit with that passive. And if you AoE her, you're going to get hit with that passive. Here, it's only for single target attacks, right? So again, like I said, it's, I don't know. It, it comes off a little lackluster to me, this kit, this unit, but... That's just me. Um, if you're gonna, if you want to buy into like the hype machine, then she looks pretty interesting. Like I said, her art design looks pretty awesome. Um, I'm just gonna pull her based on that. Um, yeah, like I said, right there, that that frame, she looked a lot like the the spider people or like the main spider guy from what's it called? Um, this animation looks pretty cool. I, I like that ring around her. Uh, but yeah, like I said, um, kind of going on a little longer than I need to now. Um, basically reiterating myself a lot. Uh, yeah, I think we'll, she'll be fine. Um, she's got a lot of defense for no real reason, considering her um, her S3 scales off of HP, and I think the S1 does not, right? The S1 doesn't... Oh, yeah, there it is. HP scaling on the S1. So why she has so much defense, I'm not entirely sure, other than just to help people who have, like, OCD kind of get better, like, round their stats out a little better, right? So, like, oh, you know, she has a lot of HP, she doesn't have that much defense. Well, invest a little bit of defense, and she'll get a lot of returns out of it. Um, especially like, yeah, I'm not sure what else, like why you, I'm not sure what the defense is there for, if you're going to invest most of it into health. Um, but again, it never hurts, right? It never hurts. So, uh, yeah, that's, that's basically it. Um, you know, like I said, summon if you want, uh, just don't, don't assume she's necessary because she, she really isn't. She's, she's just, she's all right. She's all right. Um, so yeah, until next time, uh, I think, uh, I'm going to go finish up the, put out the, uh, RTA video for today. Oh, I have to do Guild Wars too, so that's probably going to come out today or tomorrow as well. Uh, so lots of content um, these next few days, which is pretty cool. Uh, so yeah, until next time.